<laughs> Greetings folks. I am out here in the Yakon jungle. The Yakon is ripe. Uh, it's time to start digging. Usually the way we tell is that they have these little yellow sunflowers on top. When the little yellow sunflowers come and then they start to fade and turn brown is a good time to start digging Yakon. Okay, so first step was cut back all the foliage. Boy, did I get a bunch of mulch out of that. <laughs> That's organic matter from your cone. All right, so now we're down to the uh, the core, and uh, time to get a shovel. Okay, so here we're surrounded with perennial peanut. I intentionally plant that to fix nitrogen. Um, Apparently, it worked because the cone is monstrous here. Well, let's see. Let's start away from the tubers here. Let's see what happens. Well, there you go. We got a nice big pile of cone over here. That's about right yield, uh, you know, a, a peck or so maybe from every one of the plants. Uh, it's pretty high yielding. This part right here is what we propagate from. It looks a little bit like Jerusalem artichokes maybe, or kind of like reddish ginger. And so it's this portion here at the bottom of the stem that sits above the tubers. Now the tubers here, or enlarged storage organs, are actually not tubers. Uh, these are where the food's stored. And so this is what we eat, but this will not grow. It doesn't multiply from here. Here we so. are, <laughs> back in spot. Uh, this is a uh, Yacon storage organ. This is a part of it that we eat. Uh, I have taken it to the sink and I have brushed it down. And uh, I don't necessarily like the skin too much. So I'm gonna take off some of the skin. You can eat it, you can eat it, but the skin has a slightly greenish sort of sunflowery taste to it. It's not as sweet as the rest of this is. All right, there we go. Peeled off the top end. Sue. So. Okay. Brittle. Brittle. Yeah, kind of like Asian pear or water chestnut, the texture is. A lot. A pleasant smell. <clears throat> Not much smell, but it's pleasant. Um, it is relatively sweet. Crunchy. There, you can hear the crunch. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's wet and refreshing. Crunchy. It's pretty good fiber. Um, slightly earthy flavor. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit earthy. Um, it's so similar to either the texture of an Asian pear. Now this stuff will duplicate for a water chestnut. So if you're doing a stir fry and you need, need a water chestnut and you don't have it, cube this up. I will frequently make a classic pea salad with water chestnut. There's a it's a it's a recipe. Look it up. <laughs> okay, it's just basically peas, mayo, uh, sweet onion, and some of the recipes use bacon, black pepper. Um, 
Anyway, this substitutes for the water chestnut, and boy, it's a whole lot easier to grow and peel. I grow water chestnuts. We have them. Man, they're a bite uh, to have to get the skins off, you know, and all the processing and stuff. This is pretty easy. Um, it works fine cubed into regular green salads for a little bit of crunch and texture. Put it in there with your lettuce and cucumbers, tomatoes, and so on. Um, it's also sweet enough that you can toss this into a fruit salad. I've put it in with bananas, pineapples, papayas, and stuff before, you know, cut up in cubes. And it's good. Add some nice texture to the salad. The flavor is good. But the, I have a video that uh, I, I believe I'll link it down below here in the text uh, about making syrup from this. I mean, that is like hey, commercially today, Yacon syrup is a hey, number one. I mean, that's if you Google Yacon on Amazon, Y A C O N, sometimes they spell it J A C O N, but it's usually Y. If you Google that, uh, or rather, if you look on Amazon and uh, type of that word in you will come up with so many different syrups yeah, there's a lot of it the reason why there's very little sugar in this stuff even though it tastes relatively sweet so it's a fooler there is a little bit of sucrose and there is a little bit of fructose in here and they approach your mouth first i think when you put this in your mouth you go oh, yeah it's pretty sweet well that little bit of sugars regular sugars will uh you know stimulate your buds but there's another uh indigestible starch in here that is actually sweet to the palate i believe it's called a fructoglysaccharide that's what i've been told <laughs> anyway uh that starch is indigestible but it tastes sweet and so it makes a heck of a syrup yeah if you take these uh peel them throw them through a centrifugal juicer a power juicer like you know um and then you'll you'll get this liquid that comes out you put it on the stove and it's pretty much the same as cooking down maple syrup you just put it on to a slow simmer and allow it to start reducing uh there is some pulp that will rise up like sort of like a scum uh and you can skim that off save it really because it's just tiny particles of of the fiber in here embedded with the sugars and once they get cooked in the pan like that it actually turns into sort of a yacon jam yeah I, a friend of ours took my skimmings away one time and turned it into uh, uh cookies yeah she had some apple cookies i think well gracie's here giving her approval on your cone she's sniffing it she says no nah, it don't smell too bad dad huh yeah good girl yeah well so there's some of the simple uses you can put it to this is really a good vegetable to raise uh, if you have any sort of blood sugar problems yeah you can eat this stuff without getting into trouble you can use the syrup as a sweetener without getting into trouble the syrup has a fine mellow taste it's it's a lightly brown um it's, uh, it's kind of hard to describe the flavor, I guess, but it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's not challenging. You put it in your mouth, you go, yep, that's sweet brown syrup. Uh, so it's really good that way. Uh, the plant was referred to <laughs> years back as one of the lost crops of the Incas. Um, the Spanish, when they, you know, conquered the Inca Empire and all that, uh, imperialism they took out with the many different crops that the Incas raised and brought them back into Europe uh, and so there were a lot of things came out of there that uh, ended up in our diet most notably above all the potato the potato yes uh, but there were others uh, but there was a whole lot more that really never got out mm -mm. I mean things like the chirimoya um, the passion fruit uh, lily koi um, Yacon was one. There's several others, Oka and so on. These are all things, crops that the Incas raised that, uh, um, you know, we never saw till recently. Some of these have now come around. Uh, quinoa, uh, or quinoa, rather, is uh, a grain, you know, from a, actually from the beet family, <laughs> of all things. But it's a grain uh, that the Incas used. 
And that has recently, you know, and maybe going back to about the 1970s, I guess, started to rise in popularity, at least in the hill food. Now it's getting into the restaurants. So there are a few, uh, and Yacon is one of them, that is now starting to uh, uh, <laughs> see the light of day uh, years after the conquest of the Incas. Many years. Yeah, this thing was almost uh, lost. I mean, it's still growing it down there in South American places, but it started to make its way into the U.S. culture. Oh, I guess back around the 1970s, late, uh, early 80s, somewhere in there, I started to hear about this plant. I, I, I read about it first in a book, which is now out of print and expensive, called The Lost Crops of the Incas. And I said, well, that sounds like a really interesting plant. I wonder why we don't have it, you know. And, uh, well, eventually, some of the people in California, rare fruit growers, um, in California there they they had this in their circulation privately and I got a I got a cutting of it and started raising it in California it raises even better here in Hawaii my plants are usually a third larger uh, these days and the yield is definitely good here if you have uh, you know nice loose earth uh, we have really good volcanic soil here and so uh, Yacon apparently just loves volcanic soil. Our soil is mostly slightly acid, around 6162. Uh, that's actually a fairly high pH for the islands. A lot of stuff around here is like a 5.5. Five. But all I can figure is it's probably the difference between lava and ash. We're ash. So the ash seems like it's a little higher pH. The plant seems to thrive here. Um, I don't do much for it, I'll tell you that. I mean, I, I usually will provide anything I plant with a little bit of fertilizer. You know, it's just normal for me to do that. Uh, it seems like a wise idea, but I have a feeling that Yacon, like the pineapple, would probably raise on this farm with no additional fertilizer and would probably still give, you know, useful yield. So it's not uh, really very thirsty or hungry. Um, the the stalk material we get here, great green manure. Ooh, oh, do I get so much mulch. I just took it this morning here and just threw it down around some of my papayas. Um, so it's got a lot, a lot of carbon, a lot of organic matter. If you need mulch and compost too, ah, I see. You got this is a plant that you get the mulch, the stalks, all right. But then the edible part is actually separate from the part that you use to propagate. The propagation piece is a little bit like a Jerusalem artichoke. That's what it looks like, and they're both sunflowers, and it's right at the bottom of the stalk just above these storage organs and so when you take it out you make sure that you conserve some of that uh, that uh, Jerusalem artichoke looking type stuff and you get a couple of choices if you're in Hawaii you can actually take it stick it right back in the ground again and, and walk away it will come up in season which is you know late winter early spring here that they'll start to grow again um, we're reaching the end of the season here now. The plant is actually deciduous. Yes, it's, as it reaches its peak, it will begin to die back and look pretty nasty. Uh, and then it will reemerge fresh and clean in the spring again. But you can take pieces of it and you can, you know, I tend to move them into the nursery, pot them. Sometimes they just take a big old five-gallon pot full of potting soil drop the whole clump in there and let it bury it up let it sit for most of the winter safe and sound in the pot until uh, i see start to see sprouts coming out in spring then i'll take it out of there and i'll bust it apart and transplant them in the little pots uh, you know for the nursery uh, you could uh well, as I just did right now, I just took all the tubers and the propagation and I actually put them back under a layer of soil back out in the garden and then covered them up with some weed block for now and held it down. Uh, they'll store under there for a while. Yacon uh, doesn't, the tubers don't store very long, uh, it, you know, the, the edible part. This, it's not a real long storage thing. I haven't figured out 
uh, just exactly how that's done. Uh, they will go for weeks under refrigeration. They do store in the garden, provided rats and ants don't get to it. Both like it. Um, I'm not sure about the rats on this, though. I, I noticed one of the hills some time back, uh, Kevin had spotted where the rats had literally gone in and eaten an entire tuber. They just dug in there and they ate the whole thing out. It's a big hole in the ground. Um, well, I've always been of the understanding that rodents cannot fart, okay? Um, and that one of the ways, yeah, you know, rodents won't eat beans, for instance. They put beans out all day long, and I've never seen a rodent consume a bean. They seem to know. Well, the fructoglysaccharide that's in this is indigestible, and in the intestines, it really stimulates some of the bacteria there. And so, as the, uh, I often say, it makes me fart like a racehorse. You know, this stuff is <laughs> very flatulent. And so I often wonder what happens to those rats if they eat it. Uh, interesting, if I could only trace that down to say, is this stuff rat poison? Boy, would that be cool, huh? Organic rat poison. They like it, but they don't know that it's going to make them fart themselves to death. They, because they can't fart, they pump up. <laughs> right. So, there's that weird thought about you, Cohn. I got piles of this, all right? <laughs> and so, all right, I, I, I can't ship the stuff off the island, all right? I'm not gonna. But if you're here and you, uh, you know, have a blood sugar issue or know somebody with a blood sugar issue, um, I would come on by because I have bushels. Yes, I have so much. No way. Uh, and so we have the the produce and I have the propagation material. People who want to grow your cone, people who just want to eat your cone. I have enough if you want to make, you know, 10 gallons of syrup to boil down. We get that too. So, you know, get in touch with me and uh, we'll set you up. We got it. Plenty. Alrighty. Y'all hang loose. Aloha.